So in this video, we're going to talk about semantic organizational tags, and we're going to apply some to a page. So for this video, I went back to web page 03, and I just saved it as web page 06, just to give us something to start with. Uh, you don't have to do that, um, but just to let you know where this code comes from, I just want to explain what uh, the organizational, the semantic organizational tags are and show you where they go on the page. So there are a few different tags. We're going to look at particularly at um, header, footer, articles, and sections. So these tags are useful for organizing the page. They're also really useful for our um, CSS styling purposes, and we'll see that in a bit. And, you know, like I said, this, this again leads into the accessibility question where people with screen readers, um, you know, get a better sense of the, the structure of the page when you use these tags and it really is best practice encoding. So we want to make sure that we do it. Okay, so the header, as you can imagine, goes up at the top of the page. I should note here that the header is distinct from the head, right? The head is this part, remember, that we don't actually view in the browser, right? It's, it's all that extraneous stuff that goes on in the background that helps, uh, helps, the, uh, helps us to see how the page is going to look um, and does some other things. You put code up there, different things. Um, but it does not appear in the browser, um, you know, in the main part of the browser. So the header section is displayed in the main part of the browser. So that's the difference. It's, it's like the, fa you know, the header at the top of the page, like a page title, essentially. So I'll put in another H1 here, um, and we can just give this uh, play that this is about, okay. And I'll just show you how that looks. Okay, and notice here, it's just, Looks like another H1 has the same CSS styling because, you know, that's what we told it to do. So it didn't seem to really do a whole lot of anything except for, you know, the content that's in there does appear on the page. Fair point. And let, let's go on and let me just show you putting them in the page and then we'll talk about making them meaningful. Okay, so um, as I mentioned, we also have the footer that we can take a look at. That obviously goes at the bottom of the page. And we can put any kind of content in here. Um, I'm just gonna put a paragraph in here. I'm, I'm grabbing it from there just so I can get the copyright symbol. Um, that's just an easy way. That one will come into your text editor and you can, um, you can, you can paste it in from there. You, there. There's also a code that you can use to create that and that is an ampersand C-O-P-Y semicolon. And if you do that, either either one of those will render as a copyright symbol. If you take a look, and they look like exactly the same. So either way you do that is just fine. And that's a footer. And notice it looks just like the text that I, you know, that we would expect. It's just, you know, paragraph, and it's down at the bottom of the page where we would think it would be, but nothing else too special about it. But there you have it. So header, footer, and those make sense in terms of their function and what they're doing. With the text in the, in the you know, main part of the body of the page that's outside of the header and footer, we also want to organize that. And the way that we organize that is using article and section tags. And um, basically the article, although I have gotten, I've definitely gotten it switched and confused in my brain sometimes, um, the article tag is sort of the bigger container typically, and then the um, uh, section tag would be for things within an article. So in this case, we're going to we're going to mark as articles these whole sections from eight, from H1 to before the next H1. Okay, so that's going to be one article. And again, let me go ahead and save that and reload here because I think it's going to be easier to see. Here, so right um, here. Here's our header that we put in. Here's our footer that we put in, and then here I started the article here, and it includes one, two, three paragraphs, and then I ended the article here. I'm going to start a new one here and end it right before that footer because this is a complete unit. We don't want the footer in there, that, that is its own thing. 
So it's just marking out the units on the page. So these, these two big pieces are they're the main pieces of the page. And so we mark those as articles. Now, notice within this first one, we actually have a couple of these H2s. So we would like to mark those as sections. Basically, that's making them into subsections of the article. So it's an article that has two sections now. And you can see, so it's article starts, we get our H1 and then we start this section and it goes from here to here, that's section one. And then we have the article that goes from here to here and that's section two, okay? And then both of those sections are within this full article which I can just barely, I think, show on this page. Yep, so this whole thing is the article, and then we have the two subsections, okay? Now, again, but it doesn't really change the um, formatting on the page. So you might be wondering, why are we doing this? Well, I would invite you to take a look at the next video where we start to apply some CSS, and I think it will become clear.